everyone. My name is Kimberly. I'm the curator of behavioral husbandry and welfare and the curator over primates. Uh, you might be wondering what we're doing here today. We are here for Appreciate Liam. He's a six-year-old gorilla and he's getting ready to go to a new facility to be able to start a bachelor troop similar to one that we have here. Uh, you might be wondering why I'm wearing this mask. Um, Primates are very similar to us in physiology, which means that when they have germs, they can pass them on to us, and when we have germs, we can pass them on to him. So especially since he's gonna be leaving our facility to go to another facility, we don't want him to take any germs that might be happening with him. So we all wear these masks just as preventative to make sure that we're not transmitting anything back and forth. So what we're here to do today is the pre-shipment exam is gonna get um, some blood. We're going to take a look at um, his chest, the semesterase. We're gonna do a TB test on him and then we're gonna give him some vaccines. That way he's all set and ready to go to his new facility. Yeah, I get the TV. So in case you're wondering who we're here with, we have our vets, Ryan and Gretchen. <laughs> we also are assisted with Mark and Stephanie, our vet techs. <laughs> and they are ensuring that Liam is getting the very best care while he's here for his patient exam. Dr. McKinney, can you talk about what you're doing right now? Yeah, so right now I'm just putting um, lubricant, artificial tears in his eyes, just so his corneas don't dry out while he's under anesthesia. Uh, what you just saw me do was uh, a skin tuberculin test. So it's a TB test, just kind of like you or I would get. Um, we would normally get a test right in our forearm that you know the nurse could read in uh, three days. Um, it's difficult, they don't come up for us to be able to see that bump if it develops. So what we do is we actually put it under the skin, just of their eyelid. That way, if they do react um, to the test, um, their eyelid will swell, and it's an easy way for us to see um, from afar whether it's a negative test or a positive test. So just like in humans, we'll check at 72 hours. So over the next three days, we'll visualize that eye once a day um, to make sure we're not seeing any signs of a reaction to the, to the, the TB test. Thank you. All right, so we have a question. So Alicia Holmes asked, how old is Liam and what is a bachelor group? Good question. That's a great question. So Liam is six years old and a bachelor group is something that will form. I'll, I'll go back a minute. So oftentimes the way gorillas live is in a family group. That's one silverback, all the females that are his mates, and then we pair that with their offspring. So that's a very natural way. Well, as you can imagine, that puts multiple females and only one male. So sometimes you have males who are not quite old enough to form a family group, but the silverback doesn't quite still accept them into the group because they're getting a little bit older, they're getting to sexual maturity. So males will often form bachelor troops. That way they still have socialization, they still have companionship and things like that. So we mimic that here in human care by forming what we call bachelor groups. What those are is anywhere between six and 12 years old. They're called blackbacks, so they don't quite have that silverback hair yet. They're not quite sexually mature yet, but they'll form so that way they have that companionship. It's quite common to start them when they're around Liam's age, and that way they get to know each other and they grow up together. 
doesn't mean they won't eventually form family groups. That could happen if they get an SSP recommendation. But it does help them in this interim period where they don't quite fit in with a family group, but they're not quite ready to start a family group yet. And can you talk about our bachelor troop here at the Oklahoma City Zoo? Yeah, yeah so our three bachelors were formed right around Liam's age, um, quite a few many years ago at this point. Um, and they are getting along great. Uh, they are doing fantastic as a group. We have Bo, Macari, and George. And um, the reason we couldn't integrate Liam into the bachelor group is basically because of the age difference. Liam is six. He's quite a bit smaller than our current bachelor, so it's more appropriate for him to form a bachelor group with other girls of the same age. Great question, Alicia. She said, within the bachelor group, is there a hierarchy? There often is, yeah. It's not always based on age, but age can be a factor. Um, but yeah, definitely in the bachelor group, they work it out and figure out who kind of runs it. And it can be stable, but it can also vary throughout the years, depending on how long that bachelor group is together. Have you drawn to Great question, Alicia. Have you done the symbol? And for those viewers just tuning in, uh, turning in, uh, tuning in, uh, Kim, can you tell us where we are again? Yes, we are here in the hospital doing what we call a pre-shipment exam for one of our male gorillas, Liam. He's six years old, and he's getting ready to leave our facility to go to a facility where he can form a bachelor troop with others of his own age. Diana asked, how safe will the travel be for Liam? Uh, well, good news is, is we take shipment of our animals very, very seriously. So the first step of that is the pre-shipment exam. We want to make sure that he is healthy, that we know exactly um, the state of him before he ever moves. Once we get all clearance on all of his tests, then a keeper from the zoo that he'll be going to will actually come up. They will spend some time up here and they will get him ready and then he they will travel in addition to one of our keepers will travel to his forever home to get him settled. And Kara asked, is it hard on the animals having to switch facilities and adapt to new facilities? That's actually a great question. So the best way I can say is it depends on the animal. Some animals are uh, individuals where they don't live in social groups. For those animals, it's kind of similar to in the wild when an animal will change territories. So there really isn't much of a change for those animals. For social animals such as gorillas, it can be a change. Um, it is also though very natural. In the wild, Liam's getting to the age where Togo is going to see him as a rival and would start chasing him out naturally for him to form his own group. Now, on his own, he would have to then go find other gorillas of his own age to then form that group. So there could be periods of time where he would be on his own. The good thing about living in human care is we can help him. We look for other animals that have similar personality types or personality types that we think he will integrate well with when we make those decisions to be able to form those groups and help them. So we don't just make the decision just to pick up the animals and move them. There's a lot that goes into it with collaborating with other facilities and just waiting to the SSP to make sure that the right personalities are living together. And there's always an introductory period, something that we call a problem, where the animals have time to see each other, smell each other, get to know each other before they're full-time living with each other. So it, is a, it can be a long process. Great question. So for those asking which zoo in Texas Liam will be mm -hmm. moving to, we will be sharing that later on. But we can assure you it is an awesome zoo, and we look forward to sharing that information later. Put your finger down until well, then put your finger down. You might have good luck using the smaller one on his back legs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So So, Makesha asked, how much does Liam weigh? Um, uh, what did he just get weighed at? Yeah, he was 30, 38 kilograms, so it's just about 100 pounds, give or take a few pounds. Mm -hmm. And what's the size of a full-grown male gorilla? I would say 400 pounds is around average. Um, our biggest Togo is in charge of our family group, weighs 400, 
I'm going to introduce Laura here. So Laura is one of our senior caretakers. She is also Liam's best buddy. Um, she is in charge of all of his training and working with him on a daily basis. So um, Laura is very, very important to his transition, to monitoring him, keeping him safe, and helping him through this process. So if you have any specific Liam questions, she's going to be our girl. Speaking of specific Liam questions, can you talk a little bit about Liam's personality? Um, he's a real easygoing gorilla, I would say. He's really uh, cooperative and patient with training. He's really um, playful with all the kids. He loves to play with Togo, our, our silverback. Um, so he's gonna, you know, they're gonna miss him when he's gone, but they're a really adaptable group, so it'll be pretty good for him to, um, pretty good for him to get to a, a new group with some, some younger boys that you can play with and interact with some other boys. Thank you. All right. So uh, we got a good question from Randy. He asked, will Liam understand what's happening with the whole moving process? You know, I'm not sure if we can answer that because there's still a lot that we're learning on what animals can perceive. He's going to understand that something is different. He's going to understand that he's now living with different gorillas. I'm not sure if we can answer for him on if he's going to understand the reasons why. Because I don't know if they understand the reasons why things happen even when they're not in human care. So the only thing I can say is that we will monitor him closely. And our keepers and the keepers where he's going, they are experts in gorilla behavior. So that means that if they see that they need to make any changes on his behalf, they're going to do that. So we're going to adapt to him and what his needs are as he tells us how he's adapting to things. And the thing about Liam is, you know, he did come here with his mom. Um, he integrated into Togo's group, so he's done that in the past. So he does have some frame of reference. And anytime there have been changes to the group or the family, he has adapted extremely well in the past. So we do expect this to go easy for him, or um, at least well for him. Karen asked, are gorillas or animals sedated to travel? Some animals are. We generally try not to because we want them to be alert. We want them to understand the process. So at this point, we don't have any plans to sedate Liam when he travels. Alicia, another great question. Um, she asked, what kind of training does Liam get? Okay. That's so Laura. It's, <laughs> it's mostly husbandry training, so things that help with medical um, examinations and things like that. So he knows to present various body parts. Um, you're actually able to hand inject him for this exam. Uh, so we, we're tra he's trained for a, a needle in the arm. Um, we also have uh, awake cardiac ultrasounds. So he is actually trained to do those. He will come up and present his, his chest to the mesh so we can do awake cardiac ultrasounds. We just did one of those actually last week with the, the sonographer. So he's trained for a lot of different things. Um, if there's any injuries or anything, we can get a really good look at them and things like that. So really helpful cool medical procedure type stuff. Thank you. Great question. So uh, we have a question from Jessie. She asked, why the face mask? Yes. So Liam's physique is very similar to our own being a primate. That means any germs he has, we can get, and any germs we may have, he can get. Now we live out where we're exposed to a lot of different uh, germs and everything into the world. So we get things into our immune system all the time that we might it might never affect us. We might never get that sniffle or that cold. Whereas Liam, you know, he's kept in optimal health here and he has some limitations as to what he's exposed to. So there's a bigger risk of us introducing something that we might not even know that we have, such as sniffles or something, that would affect him. And especially since he is getting ready to travel, anybody who's traveled knows that it really is not good to have a cold when you're on a plane or when you're traveling. We don't want to expose him to that. So it's just a precautionary measure to make sure that we're not transmitting anything back and forth. Great question, Jesse. Um, Kim asked, will his trainer accompany him and help him with his transition at the new zoo? So we are expected to have one of our keepers travel with him. We don't have a time frame. Some of that's going to depend on Liam and how he adapts to the situation. But the plans are right now that a keeper will trans transport him. It's just this one has some stuff, but it's not even the guns. Mark, can you tell us what you're doing right now with Liam? So we're just getting some of the... Um, He's got a little bit of tartar buildup in his in his teeth back here. He's a young gorilla, so he hasn't had years and years to build up a lot of dirt on his um, teeth like an older gorilla would. So 
Um, we don't really need to do a full dental cleaning on him, but we're just gonna kind of pick, um, pick out some of the bigger stuff so that um, as he gets older, it doesn't build up even more. But his teeth look really good for, um, for a, a younger gorilla, nice and clean and white. Um, and how similar are gorillas' teeth uh, to human teeth? So gorillas have the same number of teeth as humans, um, or as, as, yeah, as humans. So uh, it's just the, the purpose of them is a little bit different. So they're uh, foragers and they're mostly eating plants and, and things like that. So they've got a lot of, their molars are real big um, and they've got canines, which can be used, they use for displaying. Um, ours are a lot smaller because we don't need them for, um, scaring off potential invaders or, uh, or, or attracting meat. So there's a little bit of differences, but for the most part, we have the same, same anatomy as far as our teeth goes, which is really cool. Thanks, Mark. Okay. Stephanie, Charles asked, how long do the teeth exam normally take? So from start to finish, it'll take us about three to four hours. That's from the time that we first go down to the building um, to start anesthetizing him till the time that he completely wakes up. The physical, ex physical exam itself will only take 30 minutes to an hour, depending on what all we need to do. Um, today we're doing quite a bit of stuff to him, so it'll probably be closer to an hour, um, maybe even a little bit more. Um, but typically, um, the time we're in the hospital is around an hour. Mark, back to teeth. Yes. Do gorillas lose teeth like we do as children? You know, that is something I will have to look up. It's a very good question. Do you know if gorillas lose teeth? Um, I, if they lose teeth? So uh, that's a great question because Aziza actually just recently got in a bunch of teeth. So she did go through a teething phase where they do get teeth in. And then, yeah, they will get an adult set as well. There you go. Yep. <laughs> yeah. It's actually kind of fun when you see that the young ones, they, they start playing just like little kids. You can see that they're starting to get them in because their tongue, they'll start playing with them. So we can, we often count how many teeth they get in at one point when we have the young gorillas. Can you talk a little bit about the zoo's younger gorillas? Yeah. So currently we have a, fa we have a bachelor troop of three boys and then we have a family troop. Our family troop currently consists of Togo, our silverback. We have Injoli, Emily, and Michaela, who are our adult female silverbacks. And Michaela, you might know, is Emily's offspring, but she actually also has an offspring now, Azinza. Azinza is, um, she was a year in January, so she's coming up on a year and a half old. And then we do have little Finn. Finn was Injoli's offspring, and he's coming up on his one year birthday in June. So that's our family group. Do you wanna scale up? Oh, that's fine. Just real quick. Dr. Yeah, McCann, Kennedy, or Elizabeth asked, what size is the intubation tube for Liam? The intubation tube today was a size 8. So an 8 millimeter endotracheal tube. Yep. We intubate them just like you'd intubate a human, so it's a little bit different for us. The anatomy is a little bit more curved, so it's a little bit more challenging, but um, otherwise, uh, human doctors, we, we kind of intubate exactly like they would intubate a human. Great question. Stephanie, can you talk a little bit about how uh, you all yeah. monitor Liam's yeah. vitals and blood pressure um, during the exam? Sure. So you can see we have all these cords coming out of him here. So we have an ECG cord, we have a blood pressure monitor, we have a pulse ox monitor. So just like we, you would when you go into surgery, they, we have all of our monitoring equipment attached. And then we have this machine over here that gives us all of our ranges. Um, so this one up here is his heart rate. Here's what his ECG looks like. So that's the um, electrocardiogram. So that's what his heart is doing at the moment. Here's his breathing. So this shows us um, each time he takes a breath. So it's an inspiration and then it's blowing out. Um, and then it gives us the numbers here so we know how many breaths he's taking per minute, as well as what his carbon dioxide levels are. Uh, we have our oxygen level. So he's at 96% oxygen. So that's a really good oxygen rate. Um, and then his temperature is down here at 97.2, so he's a little on the cold side. Uh, so that's why we have our hot, our warm air blanket on him, as well as some blankets to try and keep him warm. They typically will drop temperature when they're under anesthesia just because of the drugs and things like that. Okay, is that okay to drive there? Yes. Noah asked, 
Do you maintain gas anesthesia on isoflurane? He's on sevoflurane. It's a very, very similar um, thing. It's just a little bit of a different um, back volume. Um, so it's just um, our, our traveling machine was sevoflurane, so that's why he's on the sevoflurane. Um, typically, you know, like older animals or animals that are at higher risk will be on sevoflurane. Um, it was just a convenience for him today, um, but they both work the same. Wait, all right. For those of you who have never visited the Oklahoma City Zoo or the hospital, we have a viewing window up here where our guests can see uh, exams as they take place. So as you're visiting the Oklahoma City Zoo and you walk into the hospital, you might just see an exam. We do our best to inform people via social media when exams do occur, and we do Facebook Lives as often as we can, such as this one. So whenever you're visiting the zoo, we encourage you to check out the Joan Kirkpatrick Animal Hospital. We're one of very few zoos that do have a viewing window. And it's an excellent way to share about the exceptional care animals receive at the Oklahoma City Zoo. So Charles had a great question. He said, before returning Liam to his habitat, will he be placed in a recovery room? He will. So when he goes back, um, we will place him in an area where he can wake up in his own time. Um, often our girl is the will be curious about what's going on. And since he is still part of the family group, we will make sure that the rest of the family can at least have visual aspect with him. So that as he wakes up, if he calls out to them or if they're concerned, they can communicate until he's fully back to normal and awake. And then he'll go right back in with the group. So Togo is a very good silverback and he keeps very close eye on everything. The troop was actually there when we anesthetized Liam. So They've been able to monitor everything that's been happening and they're gonna hopefully help him as well as us helping him. Susan asks, does Liam have a favorite friend, whether it be a fellow gorilla <laughs> or a caretaker? He does, absolutely. So um, Laura are, is his main trainer. Um, so I would definitely say she is one of his friends. Um, but I think he has a special relationship with both Togo and Ruby. Ruby's three years old, so the two of them are close in age and they do like to play around in rough house. Togo is the silverback of the group. He's actually Liam's uncle, but they've always had a very close relationship and Togo is excellent with the young gorillas and the family troops. So he often will play tag with him and wrestle with him. So I definitely think um, those are probably his closest friends in the group. Great question, Susan. Stephanie here is one of our vet techs. So we have a question for you, Stephanie. Okay. Karen asked, why do you put the pulse ox on his tongue instead of his finger? So you can see their fingers are real short and stubby. So it doesn't necessarily fit the one that we have. Uh, the clamp we have doesn't fit on his finger. Um, also, you know, like their skin is very dark. So the pigment in their skin will sometimes affect it as well. Um, so if we don't get a reading on the tongue, we'll try a finger, we'll try an ear. Um, so we'll try different spots on different animals, but his fingers just weren't working for us very well. Great question, Karen. Thank you, Stephanie. Uh -huh. So for those of you who are just joining us, we are at the Joan Kirkpatrick Animal Hospital today uh, for Liam, our six-year-old Western Lowland Gorillas pre-shipment exam. He um, will be going to his new home to an accredited facility in Texas, which we'll, we will be announcing that facility later on. So we are just checking him out um, and making sure he's completely healthy before leaving. Chelsea Liam is six years old. Dr. McCann, can you talk about the ultrasound we're doing right now? So he's uh, ultrasounding his belly. We're looking to see um, at his bladder, see if he has urine in there. We're going to try to get a sample if he does, so we can check that out. Um, so that's what he's trying to get a good thing to at the moment. Sticking his hand under that warming blanket so that we don't pull it off of him too much. There we go. 
go. Yeah. So that big black area, this whole area is gonna be his, his bladder. And so all the black is fluid in there, so that's all the urine within the bladder. Dr. Cole, yeah. what are the signs uh, you all look for in a healthy young male gorilla? Well, so I'm just going to grab a tube here. Um, we look for their, um, their teeth condition. We want to make sure the teeth look good. Uh, we look at their skin and feel their body. We feel the belly, the feet. We want to make sure the joints aren't having any problems early in life because that could be a problem. And then we're also gonna get blood and check that and make sure that the inside organ function is looking good too. Kidneys, liver, that kind of thing. We're totally expecting everything to be normal. This is just a routine to make sure he's healthy before he gets on the road. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Great question, Naomi. And he just got urine too, so it looks really good. He's well hydrated. And can you talk about what you all will do with his urine sample? Sure, so we're gonna do a urinalysis, the same kind of urine test you might see on another animal. And um, we're gonna look to make sure that the chemical part um, is normal and that there's no stones or crystals in there. And uh, if we do find things maybe like white blood cells that could indicate infection, we'll send that in for culture. But I don't expect we're gonna find anything. Okay. And it's pretty clear. Yeah. You know how they always say, you know, you know, your urine should be pretty clear that says you're hydrated? Looks like he's well hydrated today. <laughs> yeah. um, Alicia asked, what would the bladder look like with fluid other than urine? Well, like if there were blood or something like that or infection material. So sometimes the wall of the bladder will get thickened, inflamed, so it should be a pretty thin wall. Um, and then if there's stones in there, we'll see a reflection. So on the screen, the ultrasound screen, it's white and black, and stones which reflect the, the sound waves will be bright white, and so we might see little sparkly crystals. But we didn't see that today, so Great. all good. <laughs> Great question. All right. So uh, we've had quite a few questions about why Liam is leaving. Can you talk about that a little bit more, Ken? Yeah. One of the things we want to do when we care for our animals is make sure that they do have um, the same opportunities and the same experiences that they would have, um, whether they were under our care or whether they were in the wild. Young gorillas that are called blackbacks, where they're not in a family troop, they're not silverbacks, they're not in charge of females, will often pair up together because they're too old to be in the family group. A lot of times silverbacks will see them as a threat to the family group, so they'll chase them out. But they're still not big enough to actually have females of their own. So to be able to allow him to have socialization with other gorillas, we will pair them up in what we call bachelor groups, so that way they have companionship until they get to be the age of potentially forming their own family group. So that's the reason why he's leaving, and it's, it's a perfectly natural thing that gorillas can experience, and so we want him to have that opportunity to have others his own age to be able to buddy up with and have as a group. Speaking of his leaving, um, Andrea asked around what time span he will be leaving. We don't have an exact date yet, um, but it will be relatively soon. I would estimate um, in the in the upcoming weeks. Yeah. So if you'd like to see Liam before he travels to Texas, we'd encourage you guys to do so. What's the next goal? Christine, we do not do a different animal every Wednesday per se. Um, animal exams are, are scheduled out, but they're also kind of random depending on uh, what comes up uh, throughout the month. So um, scheduling regu regular exams is something we do here at the Oklahoma City Zoo, but that could change at any time, depending on anything else that may come up. Uh, we do our best to let uh, our followers know when exams do occur, um, and we do our best to do Facebook Lives as often as possible. So I would just keep a lookout on social media for any announcements of exams coming up so that when you visit, you can see one. Karen asked, how will Liam travel? So um, for his safety, he will need to be um, secured in a transport, um, and then he will travel by truck. Um, some of our animals um, do travel by plane, but luckily enough, in this case, he does not need to, to do that this time. Great question, Karen. So 
In case you're wondering about how interesting gorillas are, they do have some unique things. Um, we all know that we as humans have fingerprints and that they're unique to us. Well, gorillas are the same way, but they also have very distinctive nose prints. So that's another way that um, they are unique and you can tell them apart besides just being able to look at them. Um, scientists have been able to identify up to 22 different vocalizations, everything from screams, barks, roars, grunts, and each one has its own meaning. meaning. So they are very social and they are very vocal to each other. Um, the caretakers, since they're around them so often, they do tend to be able to identify what certain vocalizations seem to mean in the group, which helps us be able to care for them because then we know what, whether they're happy, whether they're upset by something, things like that. Um, they are primarily uh, herbivores, but they might get some bugs here and there, so they have some omnivore tendencies um, if they can find that. Uh, the saddest thing is in the population that, to the best that we can see, the growth population has actually dropped almost 60% in the last 20 to 25 years. They're very hard to find, so we don't have exact numbers on those, but these guys are critically endangered in the wild. So one of the things we're doing here at the zoo is we uh, participate in the Gorilla Cell Phone Challenge. So if you have old cell phones, you can bring those to the zoo and we will properly dispose of those so that way we are not going and mining more information or more um, chemicals and more material out in the gorilla's habitat. We also, if any of you guys have ever in the past rounded up for conservation, we have a legacy partner in Diane Fossey Gorilla Fund International, and that's used to finance operations um, for research based research, research activities, and that includes poaching patrol. So when you guys come to the zoo and you do contribute to our Roundup for Conservation, you are actually taking steps to help protect these guys in the wild. Brianna, Liam is six years old. He was actually born on Valentine's Day. He was, he's our Valentine's Day baby. <laughs> So you might be wondering what we're doing right now. Um, you know, most of our animals, we wear what we call protected contact, which means we don't share space with them. So we don't always get the opportunity to be able to um, touch them or things like that. And Liam does actually enjoy painting. If you come to any of our art programs, you might see some of his paintings that he does. But it's very rare for us to be able to actually get footprints, and just like their fingerprints, the footprints are unique as well. So what we're doing right now is we are getting a few paintings of him. Well, he is here for his exam. Um, these are going to be especially important to their caretakers. Remember, our caretakers come in on Christmas and Thanksgiving, and they care for these guys 24-7. So, of course, we become very, very attached to them. So even though it is for his well-being that he's going to form a new group and he's going out um, to kind of be a grown-up gorilla, we are obviously going to miss him. So these will be some... Um, footprints that we will have as mementos for his, for our keepers um, of the time that we've spent with him. So um, they're very special. We don't often get to do this, uh, but when we are able to do it, it it's nice because we know it's in his best interest to go to another facility, but we're still going to miss him as much as you guys are. Sam? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I don't think it's Katie, we do not currently um, do golfing for gorillas at this time. So, Laura, um, can you talk a little bit about Liam's diet? Um, so they get, they're vegetarians, girls are vegetarians, and they get uh, a variety of fruits and vegetables, um, pretty much the same stuff that you or I would eat if you go to the grocery store and get anything that, um, from the grocery store that they eat. Um, the only other thing that they get that's really different in their diet is it's a monkey chow, so it looks kind of like a big giant uh, piece of dog food. And they get that, um, and they could live off of that if they had to. Um, but we give them a whole bunch of other stuff to keep them, you know, their their diet interesting. So they get a, a monkey chow, and they actually get their fruit and their chow separately, so that we can manage their weight. Um, so we weigh out uh, all their fruit and chow separately. But then everything else, all their fruits, I mean, all their vegetables and all their greens, get spread out in the yard for them every day, and then they get to forage for that, which is what they would do in the wild. Spend a lot of time foraging for food. And what is Liam's favorite food to forage for? Mm -hmm. He really likes corn, I would say, one of his favorites. Um, they also have nuts in their diet as just a, a little treat now and then, and he really likes those. Um, and he really likes, there's this feeder tire that he gets, and he really likes to play with that and get all the, the uh, treats out of those, those feeder tires. That's one of his favorite pieces. Something for. So we're gonna go 
it back over to Kim. She's a curator of enrichment. So can you talk a little bit about the enrichment program for our grade eights? Yes. So one of the things we try to do when we talk about enrichment is we want to give animals choice and opportunity to be able to do all the things that they are supposed to be doing out in the wild. One of the biggest activities for gorillas in the wild is foraging. They'll do it 60 to 70 percent of the day. So a lot of our enrichment for these guys is based around instead of just giving them their food in one big pile, we'll hide it, we'll introduce it in different methods that they can then forage throughout the day like they naturally would in the wild. Uh, these guys are also very, very smart, so the training program is also very important for them because their cognition levels are um, pretty high for, for animal species. So they do enjoy learning, so they do enjoy doing training sessions and learning things um, when we have that opportunity to do that. Um, along with that, they do also like to have social opportunities, so whether that's spending time with different troop mates or being able to see different things. Um, so really what we do is we start with our behavioral goals of what would these guys have opportunities to do in the wild, and then we try to give them those opportunities. Speaking of their life in the wild, what would a gorilla normally eat in the wild? So they are herbivores. Um, they would eat mainly vegetation. Um, their fruit diet would be very low, so we try to replicate that here. Uh, they would, if they found it, they would eat it, but mainly they're going to be eating uh, plant material. And then every once in a while they might have some small invertebrates, so you're thinking about like bugs and worms. If they find those, they would pick those up and eat those as well. Pam asks, is another gorilla going to come to the Oklahoma City Zoo since Liam is eating? That's a great question. So at this point, we don't have any plans to have any other gorillas in. We do have our two young ones in the troop, um, plus the, the females. So at this point, there would be no reason to bring an animal into the group. Um, Choco's family group is very stable. He's very content with the females that he has. Um, he's breeding with those females. So at this point, we don't have any plans to Speaking of breeding, do we have a future of gorilla babies upcoming? Well, luckily we have two gorilla babies, so it's important that we make sure that they have a natural experience and they're able to raise those babies just like we would raise our babies. So at this point, it wouldn't be natural for them to have other offspring until their current offspring are a little bit older. So hopefully in the future we will have more opportunities for that, but right now we're just enjoying our current infants um, and allowing them time to still spend time with mom and bond and grow and do the things they're And can you talk about the zoo's participation in the species survival plan for Western lowland gorillas? Yes, yeah, so a species survival plan is a very special plan that um, doesn't just incorporate gorillas, it incorporates a lot of different species. And it's a cooperation um, between AZA accredited institutions to be able to preserve species. Um, there are several keepers, they keep track of who is related to who for those different species. And then they make recommendations um, that are in the best interest of the animal to know who would be best fitted with which animals to be able to mate with. Um, a lot of times that can be long term. So it can be like our elephants who Rex is here, he's got his female, so there's no recommendations. They are here um, and they have their herd and it's going to be stable for years and years and years. But for other animals that um, frequently will change territories, it is very natural for them to then change partners. And that's where SSP can come in. They can give recommendations for which animals would be better paired with which, and then the institutions can make those plans to either move those animals or cooperate to be able to continue the survival of the species. Yes. So if you've ever seen um, the big silverbacks um, here at the zoo on exhibit, they have a real pointed head. Um, and Liam is a little bit different from them because he's younger, but that pointed head is called a sagittal crest and it's a part of their skull that um, it's almost like a little crown and it's so big because it um, attaches the muscles on the side of their head that they used to chew with. Um, and because their, their jaw uh, pressure is so strong, it needs a really tight place, to, a really high place to attach to for those real strong muscles. And that's why humans, if you feel your head, it's nice and round. We don't need to use our mouths for fighting and, and chewing up really rough um, foliage. And Liam's younger, so he's still growing his sagittal crest, but by the time he's a full-grown adult, his head will be nice and pointed like the other ones. But right now it's really round, and when you feel it, you can feel a little bit of a bump in the back of his head. Um, but right now it's still small compared to Togo. Um, but it's right back here, and he's got kind of a, a dip back here. 
and that's where his um, these muscles here attach to the back of his head and allow him to have a really strong bite force. So these muscles that go up his cheek and attach right back here. And they have the same muscles as us. Theirs are just really, really, really strong. Awesome. That's a cool fact about a young gorilla versus a, an older gorilla and why, why it looks like the males have big pointed, pointed cones. Awesome. That's an awesome fact. Thanks, Mark. Okay, so Brianna asks, who is Liam's mother? Is she one of the gorillas you guys have at the zoo? She was. So Liam's mother was Kalili. Um, unfortunately, Kalili did pass away this past winter. Um, from a condition that was undetectable by us until after she had passed. Um, after she had passed, he was fine in the troop. Everything was stable for him. Um, and then just coincidentally, um, basically the, the recommendation came from the SSP that it was time for him to be old enough that he could start his own bachelor troop. So um, Khalili was part of our, our troop, but unfortunately she has since passed away. And what age is considered an adult for um, a Western Lillian gorilla? So blackbacks are anywhere around six to 12 years of age. Um, they do start to become sexually mature in that group, but they're not, they're not really mature until after 12 to 15 years. Um, Mary wants to know what the blue stuff on his foot is. Can you talk <laughs> a little bit more about yes. uh, what they're doing with the paint? So our keepers obviously care for these guys, um, just like you know, they're a of their own family. Um, with Liam leaving, even though the recommendation is for his benefit so that he can go start his own bachelor troop, and it's um, a great opportunity for him. Of course, as his caretakers, we are going to miss him greatly. So we don't actually share space with our gorillas. That means we are never able to be in the same area as them unless they are under an exam. Um, our vets um, are very gracious to allow us to get a few footprints of him so that way his caretakers have a momentum for when he does go to his new facility. Great question. Valerie asked, how much does Liam weigh? Uh, Logan, her seven-year-old, would like to know. He, he is right around 100 pounds. All right, well, we'd like to thank everyone for tuning in for Liam's exam. We encourage you to come see him uh, before he leaves uh, for his new um, facility, his new zoo in Texas. We will be announcing uh, what zoo he's going to later on. Um, but we, again, very much appreciate you tuning in. We encourage you to watch more exams on social media later on. And have a great day. Bye. <laughs>